do the Google dance. All right, Lady Ada, this is live. Oh, sorry, I was dancing. Um, welcome to another show and tell. We have these every single Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is your chance to shine, show off your project, your maker, hacker space, your tools, your electronics, your robotics, your 3D printer, your laser cutter, anything that's cool and creative and fun, it, be it costume, cosplay, or uh, designing your own circuit boards, whatever it is, we want to see it. So come by 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We're doing it live. We have a bunch of cool people who've already shown up. Um, and we're going to call them in the order we see them. And then uh, we got to get out of here at like 7.50, 7.55. So let's kick it off with Tony DeCola. Hey, yeah. So I've been playing a little bit more with I2S, which is the inner IC sound protocol using the uh, Arduino Zero board or the Feather M0, which has a little AT SAMD21 uh, Cortex M0 processor on it. And the cool thing is it can natively talk that I2S protocol. And we've got a little amp board that uh, can listen to I2S data and play it back as audio. So last week I showed off just a simple tone generator that generates like a sine wave or a sawtooth wave. And so I've been playing a little bit more with getting just general wave playback. Like if you take a wave file and put it on an SD card. Uh, now the, the, uh, the CPU here is powerful. I mean, it's 48 megahertz but it still doesn't have enough memory to like load a wave up in, in uh, entirely memory. So I'm using the SD card and streaming the data off the SD card and then using that to play back uh, the wave file. So let me switch cameras and we'll see if we can do a quick little demo of uh, playing some sound effects back. So this is the Feather M0, uh, the AdaLogger version that has a little SD card built into it. So real handy, kind of all in one. Uh, here's the I2S amp that's uh, kind of don't ask, uh, it's not out yet project. And let me move my microphone here real quick to the speaker and I'll play uh, a sound effect. So let's try this one. And I have to re-upload the code. My code's not super optimized. Uh, oops, didn't find the serial port. Let me change this and try this again. All right, it's uploading right now. And <laughs> so, all right, so there's, there's one sound effect. That's uh, the Windows 3.1 sound. So, of course, we've got to follow that up with uh, the Windows 95 sound. So let me load this one up. Man. That's <laughs> Brian Eno kind of takes us back. Yeah. And then one, one last one that um, I'm sure everyone will recognize uh, that kind of grew up in uh, using computers in the 90s. This is a classic. You've got mail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you can just do that one over and over in loop. Uh, so I'm basically just playing these WAV files back, and it sounds simple. It's like, okay, just read the data off the SD card and play it, but it, there's actually a lot more complexity that I've run into as far as streaming data um, from the SD card. So I'm using little 16 kilohertz WAV files, which is kind of the limit as far as how fast I can read that data and play it back. You know, I'd like to be able to do like 48 kilohertz or 44 kilohertz, uh, but the problem is the SD card library isn't super optimized for speed, so there's some limits there. But it still works well for like little sound effects and things. And the cool thing is it can be all in one. You know, you've just got the little Feather M0 and play some sound effects off of it. You don't need like an audio effects board and stuff like that hooked up. So that's kind of what I'm uh, hacking on here is just getting the I2S audio to play WAV files. All right, nice. Yeah, we've been we've been hacking on. It's funny. This project started with like, oh, let's just play some music, and then it turned into like, okay, we have to like make an, a zero DMA library. Now we have to make an I2S library. Like, it, like we really dug deep into the data sheets. We've been right. like, hacking on this for a couple of weeks, but and th that's the cool thing about the zero is that it's got all these fancy new peripherals. But I think the big thing will be kind of integrating those in. You know, like the AVR has never had like a good DMA controller, and so like you know the SD card library doesn't use DMA. But now we've got all this stuff, and it's like, okay, now how do we get that to work with the library? So that'll be some fun stuff. All right, sweet. Thanks for the update, Tony D, and, c and congratulations on, on getting mail and <laughs> yeah. Windows 95 computer up and running. Yeah. Okay. Everything, everything about that reminded me of, like, okay, my Sound Blaster card is finally working. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's, it's like <laughs> it, it, it really is a nice project because we, we had to mess with IRQs a whole bunch. Yeah, no. So, it's like it was on the wrong IRQ. Yeah. Remember those little switches you'd have to switch to? We pretty much had to do that yeah. in the DMA code. Like, the, the problem was we couldn't get the right interrupt to kick off the DMA. And yeah. so like we had to look up in a table and like hand code it. Not, not that much different. Good times. Things haven't changed that much. All right. No, Pedro. Hey, guys. What's up? Hello. Hello. We have a fun Raspberry Pi project. Um, 
with the Resident Evil 2, we thought it was time to update Game uh, Girl. Game Girl 2. Yeah. The main thing about this project was sort of to make it easier to build. The hardest thing about it was uh, sort of wiring buttons. It's kind of tedious to wire a bunch of buttons, so I spent some time to learn Eagle Cad and made a little custom PCB for the buttons, so you can just solder in some buttons, wire up a uh, Pi cable, or rather plug in a Pi cable, uh, and that's really the main thing about it. So it's got the Pi 2, it's got the 2.8 Pi TFT, and it's it's got a little 2.5 watt amplifier and a, and a little mini metal speaker. And we have LNR buttons, so more buttons! Yay! So this is probably going to be out in maybe a couple weeks or so. Uh, so it's it's just a good overall update to the, the, the family of Pi Girls. Yeah, and you've got the Pi 2, so it's got like four cores, processor, tons more RAM, so oh, yeah. hopefully nice. can emulate um, much faster... Requ uh, games require much faster processor, because there's some games that are a little sluggish or like the audio doesn't come out. So we'll see. Hopefully that'll that'll be imp an improvement. Oh, yeah. More sprites. Yay. More sprites. <laughs> okay, awesome. sweet. Thanks for the update. Yeah, sure. All right. I look. Phil Shadow. Yeah. Hey, Bill. How's it going? Hey, it's Phil B. Hi. Hello. Um, just a little project I've been working on. I'm wrapping up the guide and should be should be ready to go any moment now. Um, Hacko makes this nice little battery-powered soldering um, iron. It's nice if you're if you're traveling and you just need a little bit of soldering. Um, it runs off like AA batteries, though, which um, either, you know, it just burns through alkalines in no time, or you got to bring like a NICAD or nickel metal hydride charger. Crap, like you don't want to be traveling with. And so, um, like, you're always traveling with USB chargers for your phone and tablet and junk. So um, I made a, a replacement battery holder uh, using our PowerBoost 500 and uh, the big cylindrical um, lithium ion battery and slides right in there and just keeps working. Like It doesn't modify the iron at all. That's kind of cool. Um, it's just a replacement battery pack. And now you can charge uh, over USB. So if you use up your iron um, at the end of the day, just just plug it in and, and you're, you're good for more, more soldering. All right, sweet. This is, this is going to be a big improvement over, um, well, you know, used to be you would take a butane soldering iron but then nowadays, I mean, definitely now you cannot take butane with you on a flight, so... That was my thought, yeah. That's was... the only time you would need it. Like, you don't need a butane soldering iron at home. You only need it when you're traveling. Exactly. So this is this would be great because um, definitely I've, I've had, uh, like, a Burning Man or other, like, art events where it's like, ah, thing broke, LEDs, must solder, EL wire. No, precisely, yeah. So I'm going to put it through its paces tonight and get it... Get it I have I have both irons, so I'll I'll compare okay. you know, um, the different battery types and make sure that that the um, you know I'm a, I, I I think it's going to run a good long time. Okay. Certainly well, no worries. So, but I'll I'll do the science tonight and do some science. Okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I'm sure people can't wait for that. It's a hand, that's a very handy project and a great use for 3D printing. All right, next up, Adam. Hey, Adam, welcome back. Hello. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Um, so in the area I'm at, there's a popular game called Cornhole, and it's played with a raised platform, a hole in it. You toss beanbags at the board, um, and depending on where the beanbag lands, you get a different score. Uh, so we play this often, and the issue I've run into is it's always hard to keep track of score. I've seen people drill holes in the back of their cornhole boards, and they'll use a golf tee to, as a counter to increment what the score is. But then you always have a synchronization issue, and you're trying to figure out what the other score is from the other team. It just becomes a mess. Uh, so I've been wanting to do a wireless solution for this for a while, and when I saw the Adafruit Bluetooth feather board come out, I thought this would be perfect. Um, so I've built in these two prototype boards here. Oh, wow. uh, I'm using the Adafruit feather, uh, Bluetooth low energy. There's a few push buttons uh, for incrementing and decrementing the score, and then there's the alphanumeric backpack, so you have a red team and a blue team. Ooh. And the issue I ran into when I first got these was they're both configured for peripheral mode, so they can't talk to one another by themselves. You have to have a central mode device. Uh, so I worked on an Android application to bridge these peripheral devices together so you can have peripheral devices talking to one another. So this is the Android application, and it'll scan for Bluetooth low energy devices in the area, and you can select the ones you want to connect to. Um, it just changes the icon, lights it up there, and that's basically it. It's done. Uh, and this application can be used with any Bluetooth low energy project, not necessarily these Cornell scoreboards. It's, it's completely agnostic. It doesn't look at message payloads. 
all it does is it looks for an incoming message on one of the Bluetooth connections and then broadcasts it out to all the other connections that it knows about. So from what I've read, I think you can connect between four to seven of these. I'm not sure I've only connected to two, but it, it's a way of, of getting these peripheral devices to talk to one another. And yeah, there's, there's, there's it, like Bluetooth 4.2, they added the capability for um, devices to be able to, sw like the, in the protocol, there's ways for devices to be both and like switch between the two, but like it isn't, it doesn't really exist yet. So we're hoping that we, as soon as the chip comes out, it's like the NRF 52822 or something, it's the next generation, we want to um, grab that chip and then maybe update it so all the BLE modules we have, you, you would be able to do central or peripheral. That would be uh, awesome. <laughs> when the, the, the chip hasn't been released yet, so. Yeah, in the meantime, so I have it, um, you basically press the buttons and then on the one board it's going to send it through the Android device and then it gets routed to the other board. Um, and you can do the same thing on, on the top board here for the blue team. And in Cornhole, once you get to, um, once you get to 21, I yeah. on one of them, oh. it'll basically flash the score and, and then reset itself back to zero. Okay. This is Internet of Cornholes. Yeah. All right. Well, you can always hook it up to Adafruit I've IO. I always do, wanted to say that. Do high scores later, but um, for now, you can send us an email support at adafruit.com. You get asking on the show and tell sticker. That will be the envy of all the corn tossers. We actually, you know, what's funny? We actually have a cornhole project on yeah, learn.adafruit.com. Yeah. So you can go check it out. We already have, we have a project that you may want to integrate to make, make an even more cyber. Yeah. Whole I've been waiting for um, a Kickstarter to like hit the million dollar mark of um, you know Bluetooth low energy uh, horseshoes. You know, and I could just imagine you know they light up, they glow, they do all these Bot things. ball. I mean, there's like yeah. there's a bunch of lawn games. Yeah, to like like a lot of these um, uh, favorite games from hundreds of years ago now modernize. So, anyways, all right, thank you so much, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, this is a cool project. All right, next up, Matt. Hey, Matt. Oh, we can't hear you, so check your yeah. mic. Let's we see. still can't hear you. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. We can see you, but we can't hear you. It's going to be time for Maker Charades. I see that you have a printer bot. No. No, yeah. I can't hear you. Oh, my goodness. Do you want to... Um, is it a visual enough project to, to hold it up, and we will guess? Well, he's also got, like, a little time-lapse camera going yeah. on. Yeah, oh, there. I don't know if he can hear us. Maybe he can't hear Maybe it's, like... Yeah, you know, we can't hear you. Yeah. But we could do Maker Charades. All right. It's going to be recognized as an Olympic sport... Hello? ...in 2030. No? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. Do you want to... Um, do you want us to try to come back to you? Do you want us to try to come back to you? Okay. Well, if not, um, if it still doesn't work out, we'll do Maker Charades. So get ready. Maker Charades! All right, next up. Okay, hey, Lolly. Lolly, Welcome hey, back. Guys. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, we, you sound great. Okay, uh, it looks like it's a scoreboard theme tonight, huh? Uh, yes. I, I got a scoreboard as well. Oh, ooh. You got the memo. I'm going uh, to something out of it. So, uh, as you guys remember, a couple of weeks ago, I was working on some scoreboard stuff, and I made a, um, a NeoPixel LED uh, segment for one of the big scoreboards that I'm working on for my uh, cricket matches. Oh, right. So, in the back here, you see what I made. So, I said, you know what, screw it. Let's just go large scale, full scale, right? So... Uh, I I made this right here with a um, with a Zigbee radio as well. So <coughs> I can control it from a distance. Uh, the issue is that I cannot. Um, you guys still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're we're oh, we're, okay. in, we're enamored by our three. <laughs> uh, so uh, I made a small Zigbee, uh, sorry, XP powered uh, remote control as well, so that I can control it from a distance. Initially, I thought about Bluetooth, but the problem is, uh, you know, cricket is played in a very large field, so Bluetooth, the range is not enough. So I just said, you know what, let me just try an XP radio instead. So I just rigged up a little uh, remote here that controls the up and down count of the, of the digits. So let me just try that here. All right. You can see it counting up. Yeah. And then the other way... Down. down. Yeah. So uh, right now it's powered from a 5-volt uh, wall adapter. I, I got to uh, find a very big battery to power this thing, so I'll need a buck converter as well to, you know, get it down to 5 volts. That's new pixel friendly. Um, I'm looking like at a 20 amp hour battery maybe, a lead acid battery, because wow. it needs to run like 6, 7 hours, you know, so this cricket lasts quite a while. So I'll need to uh, figure out the power side of things. Um, 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, that looks great. Good project. Thank you. That's good. I like the the mix and match of engineering technologies. Thanks. Yeah, it's a NeoPixel uh, strip, you know, just a regular strip. So I just wrote a little routine. Yeah, and then you got the XBs going on here, and you got like they're laid out, and there's a microcontroller. Yeah, and some 3D printing too. The uh, strips are actually mounted on some 3D printing uh, 3D printed enclosures. Uh, so I, I need to. I, I'm just thinking about leaving it white. I, I have to kind of experiment with different uh, colors to see what works best outside. Um, and I'll just have to play around a little bit and uh, with some diffusion techniques as well. But right, uh, that's sweet. my project. So thanks. Hey, hey, thanks, Ali. Thanks for updating us. We can't wait to see what's next. All right. yeah, I know it's probably blinding. Oh. Emails for the to come and you know, show and tell secret. Thanks, guys. Oh, back. There's a lot of space. All right. All right, and, Matt. And Matt, I, I heard you in the background, so I think you got a microphone going. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Sound fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, good. All right. So it's embarrassing now. Um, okay, I'll be quick. Forgot. Uh, Okay. My uh, well, first I'm going to show what I've I've had been working on is I uh, I like to play simulator games, you know, flight sim, Euro truck, etc. So I I've built a little cardboard super jacked up <laughs> interface with the mountain buttons and things in. It's a yeah. you know a mess of wires in the back, but that's not really optimal because I want to move a button around. I have to cut another hole and then I leave a hole. Not not cool. So I've uh whipped up something and. And a fusion that's almost like plastic erector set uh, that was 3D printed. Um, fits all the components on the back with proper clearances for a, a ribbon cable or etc. Uh, and it's zip tie or M3 bolt friendly. Uh, I've got a bunch of different little pieces now. It's all up on Imagine if anybody else wants to print one. Uh, it's been a little pet project for the past couple weeks. I really wanted something that was super easy to assemble. And if I decided, oh, I want to. Oh, the buttons need to be on the right. I can just move them over. I love it. That's great. I love it. you got the little um, LED holders and you have the little push buttons and LCD. Yeah. So you, you basically, is it is it on inch boundaries or what's like the unit? Um, every uh, hole is three millimeters. Uh, they're four millimeters, or sorry, eight millimeters uh, center to center with each square being 16 on each side. Okay. Um, so you can rearrange it any other direction you wanted to. If you want a different orientation, or if you wanted to nix the legs and actually mount it in a like a project box, it's really easy to bolt through. Okay, I love it. This is an awesome project. That's really smart. It's like um, you can imagine Steam or uh, any place where there's a collection of games. Eventually, eventually with the simulators, you'd want to be able to mix and match your hardware interface. Right. Because there's never going to be a game controller that can accommodate. I'm a truck. Now I'm an airplane. Now I'm a yeah. Airplane truck. Street Fighter buttons in the right yeah. place, so yeah, whatever. So it's neat. That, and you can also do like your own mission control style things. So very cool project. Um, all right. Could be a great controller for your cricket scoreboard, Lolly. <laughs> Cross pollinate. Yeah. And then you can you can get fancy and you can put a little L C D screen and then a yeah, whole bunch yeah. of it's got a little sixteen by two mounted in there uh, yeah, with the uh, backpack on it. That's super cool. cute. All right. Well email Probably support at adafruit.com and you'll get an S scene on the show and tell sticker. And with that we got through everybody tonight. Yeah, that's... Congratulations. All right. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Norm Pedro. Thank you, Phil B. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Lolly. Thank you, Matt. We're every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the longest-running live electronics show-and-tell on the Internet. We have the longest-running live show-and-tell, longest-running yeah. live Ask Engineering show. But it's because of everybody out there. Live. That's, a, that's neat. Desk um, Lady we got It's all live. Yeah, and uh, for 2016, we're encouraging many other sites to try to do this, too, because often it's full. So uh, for the, the veterans that are out there that have been on all these shows, um, we're going to start being on show and tells that are out there if we can convince folks to do them, too. So get, get your projects ready. That just means you can recycle a lot of the old projects, Jeff. So that's kind of fun. All right, so we'll see everybody on Ask an Engineer in five minutes. All right, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next week. Yep. Or in five minutes.